I just want to talk about food and if this is triggering please skip on. I'm just a bit concerned because my feelings have just been all over the place this month and I've been feeling either really angry, like really worryingly angry where I'm like physically shaking with how much something is annoying me or just like I want to put my head down and cry. That has been my two feelings this month that I've just been, you know, switching between. And one of the ways I've been coping with that, because this, if I wasn't on my no buy, I'd be buying stuff to cope with that. And one of the ways I've been coping with that is through binging on food. That's not reflected in my budget because I've been putting it into my weekly shop when I've been knowing that I'm binging on food so I'm stockpiling food in my weekly shop and there's part it's like there's part of me watching me do this going why are you doing that you don't feel good when you eat like that and then there's the other part of me that's talking to that part of me going you shut the fuck up because I'm dealing with this shit and you're not like you're just the little idealistic part of me that does not get reality and that's, that's what I'm finding really difficult is that there is this idealistic part of me and I think that links into what I was talking about with the sort of perfectionism parts of my personality and there's this part of me that's like go away with your idealism. That's not real life, it's not how life works. Stop annoying me with it. But they're both me. I sound really psychotic at this point. But yeah, I have been abusing food this month. Um, it's not reflected in my budget because I've been putting it into my weekly shop but I have been eating so much this month. So much convenience food, so much. I've not been ordering takeaways because I didn't want to have to take it out of my budget but I've been buying like the supermarket version of a takeaway. The sheer volume of food I've been eating and the thing is I'm a savoury person, I'm not actually that much of a sweet tooth but I have been hitting sweets really hard this month. It's been like I've been feeling rubbish and I'm going for this sugar hit even though actually if you were to really ask me in a completely non-emotional led way what I would want to eat. I'm a savoury person. I would rather eat cheese or salt and vinegar crisps or a pizza than like chocolate or sweets. If you were to like sit down and be like you know here's junk food A and junk food B the savoury junk food would win out over the sweet junk food for me. So I've been really abusing food. I'm slightly worried about it and this is why I'm bringing it up in the video is because I'm just slightly concerned that this month the no buy I think really started to hit home and I'm just about like have I moved to food as my coping mechanism because I can't buy things and it's not it's not tackling the issue if all I do is move from one coping mechanism to another but I also don't want to make big dramatic statements about it because it might just it might even itself out it might just be that I've had a really rubbish month and as I said as well I can't relive this month not on a budget so this might have just been a rubbish mental health month for me and I'm overthinking why it's been such a rubbish month you know this might have just been a bad month and it might be nothing to do with the no buy I don't know I, I, and I can't know that. I'm just a bit worried about the amount that I've been eating this month and the thing is I know, I know when I eat like that I then feel rubbish. I, it's like that thing that in the moment it feels good when I'm eating those mini rolls or Maltesters bunnies or cream eggs or whatever and particularly this time of year is bad for it because Easter chocolate is the best chocolate, best time of year for snacks. In the moment when I'm eating it, I'm like, oh, this is great. Or I, or I think it's going to be great because there's actually a part of me going, do you really want that? Do you really want that? It, but part of me thinks it's going to make me feel better and it kind of does because there's this like placebo effect where I think it's going to make me feel better. So it sort of does, but it crashes. It's the same as any other short-term high. It makes you feel better in the moment and then it makes you feel worse afterwards. I've just been, I've been feeling rubbish, I've been feeling bloated and lethargic and just not good and then that has led into all of my body issues that I have and feeling shit about my body all month. The problem is I'm trying to go on this sort of intuitive eating which I've not been doing all month because I've been eating all this rubbish 
and not listening to what my body actually wants because I know that in the long term my body doesn't want the amount of sugar I've been pumping into it. I know that I'm not listening to my body when I do that. I'm trying to stop being emotional about food whilst being very emotional about food and I don't know how to pull back from what I've been doing with the sugar abuse without it feeling like I'm putting myself on a diet like and you know it's just like I'm, I'm in this headspace where if I was to make like there's a soup that I make for example that's a kale and spinach soup um, that I really like and it's really healthy it's really good for you and it's very low calorie very low fat but it was a recipe that I came across when I was doing Slimming World and in my head it's a Slimming World recipe it's not a healthy recipe it's a weight loss recipe and it's it's trying to rewire my entire brain to be like no when you eat an apple you're not being good you're not being diet friendly you're not trying to lose weight you're not trying to like make up for being bad by eating all the sugar it's it's trying to really get rid of all of that and be like right I've had quite a lot of sugar felt good in the moment wasn't great overall let's have some healthy things to balance it and it's you know trying to think of it in a way that's not about good foods or bad foods or the fact that the way I've been eating has been bad because it's going to make me fat or make me gain weight or whatever I am putting on emotionally to that sugar and that it short term makes me feel good then it makes me feel bad like I don't oh I'm so sorry because I feel like this is not making sense at all but it's trying to stop feeling bad about the way that I've been eating because I think I've been breaking rules about how I should eat I'm trying to stop having rules about how I should eat but there's this like toddler in my brain that when I'm like right we've been eating too much sugar and we need to stop it it's like stop making rules stop making me try to eat stuff I don't want to eat I don't want to eat vegetables I just want more crisps like it's like this child in my head is controlling me and there's part of me that is an adult that is like you need some nutrients from your food and this is just making you go through these little spikes feeling good and then crashing and then it's not just the crashing from the the energy dropping quickly it's not just the physical crash after the sugar it's the mental crash it's the fact that I've just been feeling absolutely shit about my body all month because of the way that I've been eating but I don't know it's like I was thinking one of the ways that I might try and sort it is by taking the focus away from the food and giving myself a sort of exercise challenge for this month or for the month of March because I know I feel better about my body when I'm exercising and particularly if I can do exercise where I can get a little bit better I can feel like my body's getting stronger and then it's not so much about my body feeling or it's not so much about my body looking a certain way it's more about the feeling of my body and I feel like when I'm exercising I eat better anyway because I feel like it gets me a bit more in touch with my body and it makes my body want food that will make it better at doing what I'm asking it to do which is exercise but even looking at like couch to 5k and this is where I think like just this is just years and years of diet culture like part of me was like oh maybe we'll do a challenge where we'll try and do the couch to 5k like five times a week and see how quickly we can we can move and then part of me was like yeah that's really good because the more you run the more calories you're burning so you're gonna lose weight as you go up that couch to 5k and you progress at it and then there's another part of me that's answering that and being like this isn't about calories it's about being thinner or about losing weight this is about your body getting stronger and there's part of me that knows that but there's also part of me that is equating your body getting stronger or being able to go for longer with burning calories and being thinner I wasn't going to talk about it and then I think I have to because I think the way that my body issues are and the way that I feel about my body is something that I've dealt with by buying things. I think my a lot of my spending has come from not, you know, from trying to, when you're not feeling good about something, trying to just make yourself feel instantly better by sort of putting a plaster over it by buying something to make you feel better. And I think it's I don't think I could do this no buy budget year without acknowledging that because I think that's where 
drain and my finances is going is A, from the amount of food that I binge on when I'm feeling rubbish at the moment or in the past, the amount of things that I bought because I've been having a rubbish day and I've just felt like, you know, I'll buy some shoes and it'll make me feel better. So I don't think I can not acknowledge it. And the other side of it as well is that not just so much from the monetary side of it, which links into my budget, but the side of it that is like the addictive behaviours and just monitoring that it doesn't just move from spending to eating. So yeah, I'm really sorry. I feel like that whole section made very little sense, but I just wanted to document it because I do think it's relevant. I'm not quite sure how it's relevant. I'm not quite sure what Obviously I don't, I can't see them to the future so I don't know what the progression of it's going to be but I do think the eating and the abuse of food has been triggered by how I have felt this month and I think that has been triggered because I've not been shopping. I think that's what's going on so I just want to document it that that's happening. One of the things I've noticed is that I really want new bedding and new pyjamas and I think that's partly, I have included homewares in my no buy and I included them and when I put homewares in what I was thinking about was really sort of trinket dishes, Instagram props basically um, and like decorative things because I know I don't have a problem with buying furniture or anything like that so this I feel like one of the things I've been really really craving is new bedding and pyjamas and I think that links into the fact that I know that they're not something that was a problematic spend for me. And there's almost part of my brain going, you could replace them. Like, honestly, you could replace them. You know that's not a problem if you do that. Like, it feels like a justified, sensible thing to buy. And my brain's like going on about it. And I think it's just, again, that inner toddler looking for something it can sort of justify. Because I'm like, well, no, you can't justify it. Because even though it wasn't something you had an issue with, it's included in your no-buy, so you can't break your no-buy, you can't buy new bedding unless the old one like gets to a point where there's physical holes in it, which actually at the rate that my cat like lies on it and kneads into it with her little claws, there probably will be holes in it before the end of the year, but, but at the moment my bedding is perfectly serviceable and it doesn't need replaced, so I can't just get rid of it and buy it under, like this is the thing, it's a lower I'm allowed replacements, I'm only allowed replacements when the old version is run up or used out so if it's clothing it's and it's again it's this sort of grey area where for example if I was to wear out my gym clothes and get a hole in them I don't have other gym clothes so I would need to buy other gym clothes and that would be fine because it would be a replacement. If I was to wear out a hole in a dress I have other dresses so although I might not have exactly that dress I can't just replace that dress. Does that make sense? So I think my brain's like trying to find things that would be like sensible that I can justify, justify, sensible, doing this with one side of the air quotes, but sensible that I can justify because they weren't problematic for my no-buy, but they are still included in my no-buy. But it's like my brain's obsessing in on them. However, I could get my Valentine's Day gift this month, so I could have bought those if I was really craving them the way that I think I am, that's what I would have prioritised, but it wasn't. When I had the chance to purchase my Valentine's Day gift, none of those items were even in the running. I didn't want pyjamas, I didn't want bedding. I wanted the shoes that I've wanted since last year, which are the ones that I bought. And then the other two things that I wanted were a dress and a pair of earrings that I did want. And it was, it was, it was both a hard decision and an easy decision in that I wanted the shoes the longest and I decided I was getting them but it was quite hard picking that I was giving up the other two and that was the point in doing the gifts was that I would have these little opportunities to buy one thing and to see how I prioritise things and the shoes won but the shoes won over the dress and the earrings. They didn't win over the bedding, well they did win over the bedding and the pyjamas but the bedding and the pyjamas didn't even make second and third place but that's what I've been obsessing about even though when I had the chance to buy something they didn't come close. Does that make sense? The thing is I don't regret buying the shoes at all but I do recognise that they are not a sensible item whereas 
if I had listened to the part of my brain that wanted the bedding or the pyjamas, those would have been items that if I had bought a new one as my gift to myself, I would have got the benefit from them, like the bedding would have been pretty much on a daily basis, the pyjamas would have been probably a couple of nights a week, depending on how quickly I rotate through. I wanted them, but there's part of my brain that's like, I don't, they're not special enough to get as my like, one opportunity gift to myself. Does that make sense? I'm really sorry because I feel like a lot of this is just me sort of recording how I felt and I've not even processed a lot of this yet and I think I probably need to do this for a longer period of time to be able to process it but I'm just not in a sensible headspace at the moment so working through things and pro it's like I feel like there are answers that are really obvious that are just floating just out of reach but all I can do is just keep going with the no buy budget year and hope that those answers become attainable to me. I don't know, it's just that thing between I had this opportunity to buy this gift and I have been craving these slightly sensible purchases but I didn't use the opportunity to buy the gift to buy any of the sensible purchases even though I would have benefited from them on a much more regular basis than I'm going to benefit from owning the shoes but the shoes feel much more special. I'm much more excited about having bought the shoes than I would feel about having bought pyjamas or new bedding. The other thing about buying the shoes that I just wanted to say as well is that I feel like I added to my wardrobe this month whereas last month I got three new things for my wardrobe um, I bought the dress with my voucher so I can spend my gift vouchers and again just to reiterate that dress is the dress that was this this dress that I own already in a different size so it didn't it's just important to note that because maybe the fact that I already owned it in a different size meant that that feeling of newness was never going to be there about the dress and then I got this skirt and the shirt that I exchanged the Christmas jumper that I got that I didn't like for but I didn't feel like I added to my wardrobe last month even though I got three items this month I get one item I get one pair of shoes but I feel like I added to my wardrobe and I don't know if that is to do with the fact that I spent money this month versus last month where I accumulated three items but no money left my bank account. Again this is another thing where I feel like I don't quite know why I'm recording this but I just want to record that last month I added three things to my wardrobe and didn't feel like I'd added to my wardrobe. This month I added one thing to my wardrobe but I feel like I've added to my wardrobe. And I don't know if that's related to the fact that I spent money on this item whereas I didn't spend money last month. I don't know if it's whether this item is a premium designer item and costs more for this one item than those three items put together cost. Or I don't know if it's just because I got this item and it felt like this was like my gift to myself for a certain occasion versus last month it was more just like oh I need to return this jumper so I'll see what I can get in exchange and oh that dress has come in stock. I, I don't know, I don't quite know but all I can say for definite is that this month feels like I got something even though I technically got less quantity wise than I got last month. I want to talk about holidays as well so I did my video where I ranked my London haul and I did that video after having the reflections that I've written down about here in that I've always said I shop really well on holiday. Now London wasn't maybe the best example because I had it in my head in London that I was coming back and once I came back I wasn't spending any more money and I was starting this no buy budget year. So London maybe wasn't the best sort of example to start that with. What I started thinking about is that I have been obsessing all month about when I can book to go back to Disney. Now I think again part of that is maybe that I've been feeling rubbish and Disney holidays are good for my mental health. It's it's really hard to explain if you're not into Disney or you've not been or you've been but you don't have mental health issues or whatever but that being in this bubble where everyone is friendly and everything clean and bright and tidy and everything is good which it is when you hit Walt Disney World and again because I've always stayed at a Disney hotel I've never really left the bubble so to speak. It really it's very very good for my mental health I mean to the point that when I was there in March last year I noticed how 
much more friendly the cast members at Disney are in comparison to a lot of the staff that I dealt with at Universal and I noticed that in my day at Universal that I didn't feel as happy even though I love Harry Potter and I just think the Harry Potter bit of Universal is one of the most amazing magical things and I love that when I'm in it but the whole bubble isn't there for Universal in the way that it is for Disney. I have been really really craving a Disney holiday to the point I've been sitting looking at whether I could even get to Disneyland Paris like this year um, which I have no annual leave left so I don't know I don't know where I think I'm getting the time from never mind budgeting in for another holiday this year when I'm already going on three holidays but I have been obsessed about it in the same way that I would obsess about getting a new pair of shoes or whatever I have been obsessing about when I can next book my next Disney holiday and when they're likely to release the free dining offer and when the flights will become available for different date combinations that I think would be nice to go on and like really obsessing over it that's all I can say is that it's been an obsession very akin to when I used to I say I used to as though I've not done this for ages but like an obsession akin as to when I've obsessed in the past about buying certain items of clothing. It feels like a very similar process to coveting new things for my wardrobe rather than appreciating what I actually have and that I've been coveting and obsessing over this next holiday that I can book when I'm going on three holidays this year and it's like I've chucked all those holidays out the window because not because I want to lose any of them but because it's like they're safe and I like own them in a sense in that they are booked and I'm going on those holidays whereas I don't have my next Disney holiday booked and it's making me really anxious and to go back to the annual leave situation I'm almost what I'm just a bit concerned about is that holidays could be a danger zone for me and that I know when I was in a very unhappy relationship for an extended period of time I booked a lot of holidays for us and it was almost a way of not having to deal with what was not right in the relationship and that I would just book holidays and we'd go on holiday and everything would be great. So I've, I definitely know I've used holidays in the past to cover up dealing with the real issues of things and I'm just slightly worried that holidays have been kept in check for me because I have a set amount of annual leave every year and I can't go over that and that forces me to keep it in check. I'm just, I just want to keep an eye on it that maybe holidays in themselves are a potential you know another category that I overspend on and then that then led me on to thinking about the way that I shop when I'm on holiday and if being on holiday itself is kind of like what's the word like like if, if I have this sort of supply and demand approach to dopamine that I get from buying stuff or eating sugar or going on holiday is the reason that I generally shop quite well on holiday linked to the fact that I'm already getting that dopamine from being on holiday? Like is it that because I'm on holiday that's ticking a box in my brain that's like we're living our best lives, we're, we're doing what we want to do, we're doing what makes us happy. Therefore my brain's maybe not looking to buy stuff in the same way it is at home because being on holiday is already fulfilling what buying stuff at home fulfills. Does that make sense? Again, not massively sure I've got much more to say in that. I just want to record that I'm having this thought process and record it and keep an eye on it and maybe have it as a reference point to come back to if I have further thoughts at some point. The last thing that I've made a note on, yes, we're finally, finally at the end of these notes, is that I have always kind of just been like, I have too much stuff I'm an untidy person. I've always wanted to have one of those like tidy spaces where like everything has its place but I've just been like I'm just that's not me I'm just not naturally like that and my room would still be a mess I think to somebody who's really like that but it is so much of an improvement on what it was and that is just one of the few positive things I've noticed this month that I just feel like it's nice to get a positive thing in there. Just that stopping that flow of things coming in. I suppose what it is is that 
it's given me time to live with and if I've just organised one or two things every day there's not a new two or three things coming in every day basically so I've actually been able to get to a point where I've been semi on top of it. It definitely still gets a bit messy through the week when I'm at work and I'm busy but like Saturday morning like this morning I got up the clothes that I'd kind of piled up in my dressing table through the week I sorted them out you know put them away where they're meant to go it's, it's slowly kind of becoming more manageable just by not just by stopping that flow of stuff um, and I, I really thought to ever be able to do that I was going to have to get rid of loads of stuff and it would definitely be easier if I got rid of loads of stuff so I would would like to declutter things at some point this year which is what my actual wardrobe's kind of talking about also I will kind of go through my beauty empties and talk about my beauty projects uh, I think maybe my ne no my next video I think will be my next capsule word videos the video after that I will discuss my 2020 beauty projects and how I'm kind of hoping to manage that aspect of my life um this year but it's just been nice in that I feel like things are starting to find their places in my room just by stopping the new flowing in and that's been really I think good for my mental health as much as I've had a really bad month overall I think just having a clear space is such a game changer and it's quite ironic that I'm saying that when I've lost this doctor's art serum somewhere in my room but that's actually what makes it more frustrating because there's not piles of stuff everywhere that I'm like oh it might have fallen into this bag and it might have fallen behind this and it might have fallen here it's kind of like my floor is actually clear for once and I've checked under the bed and I've checked under the furniture and I genuinely don't know where this serum has gone because I can actually see the space which beforehand if I'd lost something I'd have been like it's in there somewhere I don't have the energy to go through it whereas all the little piles of things that would around about the place have slowly over probably January as well but I just didn't notice it as much in January but through January and February have really slowly started to be sorted out and I actually have some space and I can see my carpet and like I hoovered this morning and this will really sound like ridiculous I'm sure to loads of you but it took me like less than 10 minutes because I didn't have to go about picking up everything that was on my floor to put it on my bed to hoover and then have to move everything back off my bed and put it back where I had taken it from I literally I do still have a couple of bits and pieces on the floor that are definitely it's not perfect there are still things that need tidied but it was like picking up a couple of boxes this morning and putting them on my bed hoovering and putting them back and it was just such a nice feeling to be able to complete that process without it being this massive undertaking so yeah that that is the, the positive of the month and I think it's nice to see that, that, that there is a positive because I feel like everything else has been quite negative. But yeah, the thing is, it just hasn't been a good month. And I've gone over my budget and that's really annoyed me. But it's just not been a good month in terms of my feelings about things either. The fact that it's not been a good month mentally for me, coinciding with the fact it's not been a good month and that I went over my budget and failed at that. The fact they've coincided is not great. But... If I do what I've done when I've gone like off my Slimming World diet or whatever in the past where I go well you know I've gone over my calories by X amount or I've had an extra biscuit that I shouldn't have had so throw it away and eat everything in sight and then feel rubbish about it afterwards. If I do that with this and I throw out the fact that I've gone over my budget for one month and if I throw it all away and don't do this then all that's going to happen is that I'm going to be back in six months time telling you guys that it's really necessary that I do it because I'm not doing it for a fun optional hobby I am doing it because this is what I need to do unless I want to compromise on my holidays as I said in my last video um, I need to learn where my money is going and I need to sort that out if I'm not happy with it and that is that's is exactly what's happened this month I didn't realize how much money my hair was costing me 
and I now need to sort out what I'm going to do about that. If I'm happy about it, if I'm going to compromise on other things to allow for it or, you know, if I'm going to find an alternative hairdresser and, you know, figure it out. If I hadn't done this, I wouldn't have known that that was an issue. So I have to try and stay positive about it and I want to end on a positive note. I'm not throwing it away. I'm annoyed with myself, but overall doing this is the right thing for my life. All I can do is take what I was over my budget by this month and take it away from next month's budget and come in under budget in March so that at the end of the year, that one month that I went over my budget is not going to have affected my overall year because my overall year will come in under budget and it will because I am never going to get anything done ever again without knowing what I can expect to pay at the end and the fact that I had to do that to learn that is ridiculous but it is what it is. Not feeling great, I'm not going to sit and pretend that I'm feeling super positive when I'm not, I'm just trying to find the positives and hold on to them and hopefully in my next video I'll be in a bit of a better headspace and it hopefully be more concise and a bit more cohesive. That would be ideal. Thank you very much for watching this. If you've made it through to the end of this slightly wild, rambly, all over the place, fragmented look at my month. I really appreciate if you've watched it through to the end. Well done. Um, and yeah, I will speak to you in my next video. Bye.